Hey guys, my name is Naraj, and uh, I'm one of the co-founders at Ritual. Um, I'm gonna really talk about AI crypto as a whole, kind of go high level and talk about, you know, why is this happening now? Why is it interesting? Uh, and so a quick show of hands, I'd love to see um, how many of the people in the room are, are maybe AI people first? And then how many people crypto? Okay, great. So this is not, this is you know, obvious to everyone in the room. AI is starting to eat the world. You know, it's used in so many different areas. Uh, ChatGPT has two to 300 million daily active users in you know, two to three years, which is incredible and, and kind of unprecedented. And the, the AI you know, intelligence quotient is going up pretty significantly. I would argue that some of the best LLMs are smarter than the, you know, the majority of humans in the world, which is a pretty crazy thought to think about. So there are a number of problems that we see in AI, uh, namely regulation and this kind of issue with, with keeping incumbents enshrined in their current positions. Everything is highly centralized across storage, compute, provenance of data then ultimately it's, it's highly permissioned. You know, we saw in the 2010s, Facebook and Twitter rug all of their early developers, you know, companies like Zynga and TweetDeck, you know, became billion dollar plus companies on the backs of these platforms, but they weren't able to, you know, exist. The incentives of the platform with the apps are building on top started to get out of balance. And I think this is really where crypto networks shine is that they are highly, uh, collaborative rather than competitive with the apps that are building on top. So what's the future impact of the centralization? You know, largely we see things like censorship being an issue. We've seen things, you know, the OpenAI fiasco in November, the BARD fiasco a few months ago. And these things will continue to keep happening if these AI models and the products that run them are stuck inside of centralized corporations. Largely, going forward, as AI starts to get added into more products, these things are starting to get weaponized and people are building propaganda. It's already in use in the 2024 US election media and the Indian election media. So it's actually a really big problem. And I think it's apt and timely to have you know, crypto be one of the potential solutions to this problem. So this is, I think, where AI crypto can come in. There's a couple of properties that we think about as being important with that lens in mind. One being censorship, preventing censorship and keeping things transparent and, and making sure that it's accessible in any country or, or place in the world and that anyone can access it and it's not gated by a country or a, uh, or a corporation. Second is being able to do verifiability. Uh, being able to get proofs that something was run correctly is an important property for many different users of these applications. And then finally is privacy. Being able to have confidence that the input, inputs and the outputs into and out of your applications are staying private. So what is Ritual actually doing? The goal of what we're trying to do is make it very easy for smart contract developers to plug AI models into their applications. We have built a you know, very simple set of libraries and tooling that allow you to, you know, inside of Solidity, call out to our system infranet, which I'll talk about in a second, with a model, the features, the input from the user, and then be able to take that output and you know, optionally leverage it on chain with privacy and proofs. So the first phase of what we built is called Infranet. We have a, a number of teams building on Infranet today. This is live and also fully open source. Infranet, you can, you can think of as a decentralized Oracle network. So what it allows you to do is take a smart contract, you know, one of our smart contracts, you know, call it from your smart contract. It initiates a request out to our Infranet system, which is a, you know, a, a node system with their compute request and the, the model 
features and an ID and other things that you want. It goes and does the work inside of a container and then returns a result back that you can then leverage on chain. This, uh, you know, has fairly low requirements from a, a system capacity, although, you know, having good GPOs is, is ideal for, you know, certain types of models when you're actually being matched to a model to, to take down. The second phase of what we're building is called ritual chain. So what ritual chain is trying to do is take the work we've done with Infranet and apply it into an execution system that now you get these sort of optional, additional great guarantees around being able to you know, create things like agents, getting the nice on-chain semantics around tokenization, provenance, and things like that. And I'll, I'll go into that in a second. But we're designed to be you know, fairly kind of modular and compatible with other systems. So Infranet doesn't like get phased out when Ritual Chain comes out. It continues to exist. It's compatible with any EVM-based chain. We've deployed it on Ethereum and a number of layer twos for uh, different applications building on Infranet. And, and theoretically, I guess you could port it to, to other um, execution environments as well. So Ritual Chain is something that's coming soon. We're, we're, we're building right now. So the question is, how do you actually use this? How do you inject AI models into your applications? I've mentioned a number of these properties. You know, being able to consume these outputs inside of your smart contracts directly, any EVM compatible chain can, can have access to this. But what actually you know, is happening under the hood is we are extending the EVM with stateful precompiles that are you know, ML optimized, you know, ML native kind of code for things like inference, fine tuning, you know, vector DB stuff, and you know, a whole bunch of other pieces. Not as much on training, we don't really focus on that. And then a developer can then leverage that in a few lines of code. Additionally, the piece around verifiability is not something that we are building directly, but we're leveraging the community. You know, there's a number of people, you, know, you heard Modulus talk earlier today. Um, we will leverage outside groups to bring verifiability to Ritual. And really, you know, people can pick, you know, the developer can pick what type of proof they want for the application that they want. I think it's really important that developers can pick the level of verifiability that they want so that it matches the cost and needs of, of, of their users. Again, this is all you know, sort of modular, so you can pick your own storage layer, Arweave, Filecoin, or whatever else. We've, we've already built some tooling for Arweave that is open source, and you can go leverage and pull down today. And again, you can develop on Ritual Infranet, or you can use um, you know, for your own chain, or you can use Ritual Chain itself. So this is a little bit of a it's sort of a diagram of how you can think about this from a developer standpoint. So really, again, we're, we're trying to optimize for a wide range of optionality. You know, rather than be myopic about a specific technology or, uh, or, or sort of direction, we are allowing people to build apps with, with different combinations of features. So maybe you want an optimistic proof for a social app you're building, but if you're building a you know, mission critical DeFi application like on Allura, you might want you know, ZK proof or something like that. Um, I think the important thing here to mention as well is the on-chain semantics. So we've built a number of libraries. Uh, this is open source as well, uh, called Infranet ML. It'll be ported over to Ritual Chain as well. This allows you to do things like payments for the, you know, for the model resources, build things like agents, and then ultimately program incentives into different parts of the application, whether that's ongoing improvement of models or the usage of them or really anything else, governance. And we also additionally allow you to either you know, leverage closed source models, you're not going to get any privacy or um, integrity with that, um, or open source ones like Llama, Mistral, etc. I guess point on GPUs, we are not a GPU as a service company by, by nature. We plug into other GPU as a service providers. Ultimately, our goal is trying to make it easier for developers to integrate ML into their workflows and demand or create more you know, demand generation for GPU as a service companies. One of the challenges we've seen with a lot of the GPU as a service companies is that the utilization rates are really, really, really low. There's a lot of supply, but there's no demand. 
So what we're trying to do is create new use cases, new things uh, for developers to create that'll bring more demand to these GPU as a service companies. Okay, what are the different things you can build? We think that there's an interesting AI analogy or, or sort of use case for a bunch of the different subcategories within crypto. One that you know, many have mentioned today is, is being able to leverage ML inside of DeFi, whether that's to do yield optimization or risk management around lending and, and a whole bunch of other use cases. Around content and media, we've seen a number of projects build these sort of NFT mint contracts on top of Ritual where people can go and, and sort of put in an input, generate an NFT, and then sell it. And I think this is going to be a really big way, these sort of AI NFTs, that people will come and get onboarded into, you know, into the AI crypto space. Governance is another really interesting one. You know, we've seen in the you know, traditional you know, corporation, you know, traditional corporate space, um, it runs a lot more efficiently than the DAO space does today. You know, it's, it's kind of foreign to have all shareholders vote on every single decision by the corporation. Additionally, things like, you know, things like proxy services exist to delegate votes to other parties. And I think this is where AI can really help. You know, it's not going to be making decisions on your behalf, but it can help the humans a lot with decision making. Then finally is gaming and entertainment. Being able to customize an experience to the app that you're building or generate skins or, you know, items is a really big piece of where this tooling can be used in the you know, gaming and entertainment space. Okay, so a couple of things on, on where you know, AI is enabled with crypto. It's these cryptographic primitives we've talked about, um, you know, integrity, privacy, provenance of data. So being able to reward the contributors that come and improve models uh, is, is something that you know, is, is buildable on top of Ritual. Governance, ultimately, how is the model steered and how should the model act when given some input? Then finally, incentivization. You know, I, I think with AI crypto, we should really lean into the crypto part and allow people to, you know, incentivize good behavior for the different pieces of applications that they're building. Whether it's at the compute level, the model level, or the data level, things like RLHF uh, incentivization or incentivizing for, for compute. There's a lot of interesting primitives to be built and, and to be done inside of this space, and I'm excited to see what, uh, what people build with this. So here's a quick case study of something that we built a few months ago with Infernet SDK. So we built this when you know, more people are using FriendTech. Um, it's basically an on-chain smart agent so normally in a friend tech room, it's a, you know, it's a person going and answering all the responses. We instead put a friend tech bot, like a bot run on, on Ritual behind it. And you basically have to try to convince the bot to buy your keys. There's a number of paths. No one solved it yet, but there's a number of paths. And there's a prize pool if you're able to um, you know, crack it. So it's almost like a word puzzle with an LLM that I think is kind of interesting. And uh, this is all fully open source, um, so people can take this and you know, create new examples. And um, there's you know, a number of different pieces from you know, a number of LLMs that are running on Infranet, plugging into a, onto a ZK proof on chain uh, for classifier, and then ultimately you know, spitting out the result. So there's a number of research directions that we're excited about and we're looking for collaborators on. Everything from open model governance to the integrity and privacy stuff that I mentioned, MPC, TEs, uh, game theory optimal compute routing, incentives, uh, data retrieval and provenance, and then you know, more research around agents. Uh, we'll be releasing some, some agent code in the next couple of weeks, uh, but we're always looking for people to, uh, you know, to give us feedback and, uh, on the stuff that we're building. So, there's a number of things that you can do on Ritual today. One is being run an infranet node. You can start pulling down requests and soon you'll be able to start getting paid for those requests. And there's a number, you know, a dozen dApps building on infranet already. Um, you can build on our network. We're always looking for new 
collaborators and projects uh, to, to work with, and we're happy to kind of work with you and help with integration. You can use the dApps that are being built on Ritual, uh, many of which we'll be announcing over the next couple of weeks. And then contribute to our open source repositories. We're a very open source first company. We've released dozens of repos of code since we started. And then ultimately, uh, our Discord, which has a bunch of great, uh, great community and, and stuff to do in there between uh, you know, whether it's for developing or not. And that's it. Uh, these are places you can find us. And you know, happy to answer questions uh, if anyone has any.